Hey everybody, one of the coolest things about the Steam Deck is how powerful Steam input is combined with those trackpads on the front. And today I'm bringing you another trackpad guide. If you've missed my other trackpad guides, they will be linked in the description down below that like button. So after the video is over, make sure you check those out if you wanna know more about the trackpads. Another reason that I'm making this video is because I put out recently a video about my favorite strategy games on deck and a lot of people were asking could you do the same thing for real-time strategy games now i full transparency i really don't play real-time strategy games all that much and i look through my library and i only have one of them and that's star wars empire at war but i figured people were interested in how you could play a game like star wars empire at war one of those old school rts games on deck that are designed around the mouse and I'm here to tell you, you absolutely could. And this video is going to show you how you can do very cool things with mouse regions combined with a few other things to make games like uh, Star Wars Empire at War playable on deck. If that sounds good, let's get started. So let's start with the absolute basics. A lot of people would probably bind the mouse to one or both of the trackpads. And I've done that sort of, but we'll get to the trackpads in a little bit. I also have the mouse bound to the right joystick. Now, the right joystick is good because I can get across the screen really quickly, but it's very sloppy to control. However, because the right joystick, well, both joysticks really have a capacitive sensor, it knows that I've got my thumb on there, and that means it knows to activate the gyro. And if I've got the gyroscope activated, then I can also control the mouse that way. So I can get across the screen real quickly and then use the gyro to make more precise selections, which is really good. Now, real-time strategy games are absolutely not the kind of game that I tend to play. I, nine times out of 10 when I'm playing a game like this, I select every unit that I have and send them all after one thing and then select every unit that I have and send them all after one thing again. And I know that there's a lot more micromanaging that needs to be done in this kind of game. That being said, let me show you how I can, how you can set up uh, Steam input with um, the controls on the Steam Deck in order to make micromanaging a little bit easier, even if it's not something that I do. Well, like I said, uh, select all. I've got that set to A for all, which is super easy. Uh, if I just click off to the side, we don't have anybody selected anymore. Now let's say that I want to select one character. I move my mouse over there and I select them. But maybe I want to select this guy over here as well. Well, if I want to select both of them, I could either click and drag, which is one way to do it. But what if I wanted to select this guy and this guy? Doing a click and drag is going to select a lot more than I actually wanted to. So what I do instead is I've got Y, the, the Y button, set to be a shift toggle. So basically I hit the Y button and now it's as if I'm holding down the shift button and I can select that guy and I can select that guy and now I've got those two selected. And now I'm gonna hit the Y button again and I'm gonna select a third guy and you'll see that it doesn't select all three anymore. So the way to set that up is actually very, very easy. I'm gonna go into my buttons and over here under the Y button, you're going to see that I have a shift key. I click on the gear and uh, under settings, all the way down near the bottom, we have toggle. You turn that on and it's like hitting it once, turns it on, hitting it again, turns it off. So there you go. Also, control A in this game is select all. And so right here, A uh, is the button that I'm pressing. And then I have a sub button in order to, whoops, in order to do that, you click on the gear, you add a sub command and it adds this. And then I add the control key there. That allows me to hit control A with one button instead of holding down a modifier when I push the A button. So that helps a lot. Let's go back to the game. Now, uh, like I said before, micromanaging is very important. If I want to select a stormtrooper, I can click and select the stormtroopers. I can also double click a stormtrooper and it'll select all of the stormtroopers. Uh, that's something that's built into the game. That's not something that I did using the Steam Deck. But we can modify this. Let's say that I want every stormtrooper to be in group one. 
Well, I've set up my D-pad so that if I double click the left on the D-pad, that is going to set whatever I have selected to group one. And if I just hit the D-pad once, it will then select everybody that I have as group one. So I'll unselect those guys. I'm gonna hit the left on the D-pad and you can see that I've got these two selected down here. Now I'm gonna hit up on the D-pad and it's going to se select all of these ATSTs that I have on the top left. I'll hit right on the D-pad. It's gonna select this ATST over here. Sorry for the glare from my uh, studio lights. And if I hit down on the D-pad, it's going to select these two. So basically what I've done is I've, or actually, these two and this ATST. Let's move on to camera control. Uh, this isn't necessarily camera control, but I couldn't think of anywhere else to fit this in. Uh, this game and many other real-time strategy games has extremely small text. You can see some small text uh, down there just below uh, that shuttle. And because the text is so small and we're dealing with a very small 7-inch screen, sometimes you're going to need to be able to magnify it. Now you could hold down the Steam button and hit the L button and it's going to zoom in on the screen so you can see what's in different places. Uh, but I think that that's kind of an awkward reach, like hitting the Steam button and the L button is tough to do. So what I ended up doing instead is I went into my settings, uh, edit my layout, I went into the buttons, and if you come down here to the bumper, I set up my left bumper, the L1 button, to be toggle magnifier. Now when I did that, what happened is if I hit the toggle magnifier button once, it would zoom in and then it wouldn't zoom out again unless I hit the button again. So what I ended up doing, my solution for that, is if you come down here to uh, my toggle magnifier, I went into the gear icon and I said add extra command. And then I set this command, which is toggle magnifier, I set that to be uh, start press. So right here it usually will say regular press. I set it to start press. And then I set this one to be release press. And I set them both to do the same thing. So when I hold down the L button, it zooms in. And when I let go of the L button, it zooms out. By default, when you're using the magnifier on Steam Deck, the right trackpad is built in to let you pan around the screen so you can look at different areas. Like maybe I'm looking at the wrong area here. I can't use that because I've got the right trackpad uh, set up for something else. So what do I do? I just use the gyro. If I want to look at different areas of the screen, I will just use the gyro in order to look around. Uh, and it works really, really well, especially if you just really quickly want to look at some text or maybe zoom in on a particular character. Whatever it is that you want, magnifying is super important for certain RTS games because the text is so tiny. Another piece of camera control that you can do in this game is by holding down the left button, the left mouse button, and the right mouse button, you can control, whoops, let me come up here, you can control the um, uh, the camera rotation, which is fine, but I don't want to pull both triggers at the same time, so I just set that to be the right bumper, and that makes it so much easier. Now, how do you set the left bump, the, the the right bumper to be both a left click and a right click. You just do it with extra commands. So I'm going to go back into my buttons, and uh, my buttons are right here. I'm going to go to my right bumper. Uh, here's my right bumper. If I click on that little gear, I can come down to add extra command. Once I add an extra command, the first command is left click. The second command is right click, which basically means that hitting that that bumper is hitting both at the same time. Let me move my mouse out of there. And then I can easily adjust my camera. Other camera controls. I do. You probably noticed me using this before. If I move my left joystick around, it lets me see, uh, you know, manipulate where the camera is. And this works really, really well if, say, that I tell this ATST to go uh, walking someplace. I can just kind of follow him as he goes. And I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to get drawn into a battle here. Um, but. If I want to go like across the map, this takes a ridiculously long time. It takes forever to get across the map. So uh, I've got another solution that works really well. And most people would probably think, well, I could just reach down and tap this little map with my thumb. And I could, or I could drag the mouse down and, and tap with the mouse there. And that would be fine too. But 
you can do something called mouse regions which works so much better so let me show you how mouse regions work if you look at my left trackpad i've got a mouse region set up so that when i put my thumb on that trackpad the mouse where's the mouse right now the mouse is in the middle of the screen the mouse jumps to that little square down there and then i've got it set up so that if i click in it just jumps to that location and this is almost a one-to-one -one ratio it's super super easy and then when i let go the mouse jumps right back out let me show you how to set that up so i'm going to go into my settings edit layout i'm going to go down to trackpads under trackpads we want to look at the the left trackpad first off i set it up to be a left mouse click and I set that click to be a regular press. I think by default it was a soft press, which I did not want to use. Uh, and then under mouse region, I go into my gear and uh, the, the whole part where the mouse jumps into that spot and then jumps back out, that's right here. That's these two buttons. You want to make sure that those are turned on in order to do this. Now they call this part of the menu on screen display, which is a horrible name because there is nothing on screen to indicate where the mouse region is. I would love it if Valve would set it up so that when I'm setting up the mouse region display I could see a temporary little square that's on the screen so that I would know where the mouse region is. That would make things so much easier as a little overlay and it's not like we don't have overlays in other parts of uh, Steam input so that's that's not a huge ask I don't think but let's talk about these settings uh, from top to bottom so number one region horizontal position the region horizontal position tells you where is the center of the mouse region in relationship in relationship to the x-axis of the screen so basically on the left side of the bar you're on the left side of the screen on the right side of the bar you're on the right side of the screen the next one down is the vertical position of the center so all the way to the left is on the bottom all the way to the right is on the top and I've got this set up so that we're way over on the left and way down on the bottom which is where this area of the screen is so we go back into this and now we've got the region size the region size is how large of an area it's going to take up so currently I've got it set to 11 just like Spinal Tap, I'm gonna crank it up and then I'm gonna come back out and you'll see that now the mouse region is much, much bigger and that's not nearly as useful. So I'm gonna bring that back down to 11. And let's see if that's better. Yes, that is better. We jump back into the settings. I jumped too far out. By the way, I'm not sure if you guys noticed that. This is something I, recently figured out if you are doing a setting don't back out of the settings with the b button just hit the steam button and then when you hit the steam button again you don't have to re-navigate to where you were i'm relearning some muscle memory for that all right we're back on trackpads i want to go down to the mouse region and on screen display so we're looking at this i come down here and you can see we've got the horizontal scale which is how big it is horizontally how big is it this way and then we've got the vertical scale which is how big is it this way uh, these are pretty close on this because this particular shape down here is kind of squarish i think it is a little bit taller than it is wide which is why i expanded it just a little bit more whoops um, on the vertical axis than the horizontal axis uh, then you've got trigger dampening i'm not using the triggers for this so i don't have trigger dampening turned on you have outer ring that's not something that I would use in this case, but maybe if you guys have an idea, let me know in the comments down below. And then haptics, which I have turned on so that when you are using it, it feels you like you can feel something under your thumb as you're moving your thumb around on that trackpad. All right. So basically what happens is I'm playing the game and I need to go up here so I can just click up there and go, or I got to go see what my characters are doing down here and I can click down there and see what they're doing uh, and it's really really handy so right trackpad what am I doing there let's talk about that right trackpad this is where I would I had already made this video once and I decided to redo it because I had an idea for the right trackpad I've got the keybinds for the game and you can see that I've got a bunch of keybinds there 
I've got a bunch of keybinds there, and I've got a bunch of keybinds there, and I could go through and keybind all of that stuff. That'd be a ridiculous amount of work, and then I would have to remember where everything goes, especially because SteamOS doesn't currently have labels for Steam input on radial menus or anything yet. That's not a good way to do things, but check this out. If I select everybody, all of those abilities that we were just looking at, they correspond to these rows right down here at the bottom. So I set up my right trackpad to be a mouse region that only corresponds to the stuff that's down here. So my mouse will be, I gotta find the mouse, there it is. The mouse will be up here and then I touch this trackpad and it drops down here and then I can easily click all of this stuff right here. So like, let's say I wanna click on Darth Vader's uh, force push ability. There it is right there, bam, I just set it off. That makes it so much easier than having to have a bunch of key binds. And I really don't have to move all that much to invoke it. So the, how did I set this up? If I go back into my settings and I go down to my trackpads, I'm gonna look at my right trackpad. It's set up almost exactly like my left trackpad. The only difference is my on-screen display. I've changed the horizontal position the vertical position is kind of the same, it looks like, it's pretty close. The uh, region size is different. And then look at my horizontal scale versus my vertical scale. I made the horizontal scale a great, uh, a great deal bigger than the vertical scale because this area is much wider than it is tall. And that allows me to uh, easily get to all of these little buttons down here that I otherwise would have to mouse around using the gyro and the joystick. And I can still use the gyro and the joystick, but I get, if I gotta get down here quickly, I can just tap the trackpad and go. All right, everybody, that's it. Let me know what you would do differently in the comment section down below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. 